Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for being here. We're standing before you today to speak to you about two uh, particular things, and they are intersectional. What happened this week and what happened um, two years ago with Ladder Plantation really touched each and every person in this county, but more importantly, every black person. So let me start with this. The Charlotte Mecklenburg NAACP sent a letter directly to Ladder Plantation, hoping to have a, a conversation about the harms of having uh, any program that elevated Confederate soldiers. We're not talking about Union soldiers, we're talking about Confederate soldiers. More importantly, hearing the stories and complaints that we received, that young people, African American people, were asked to go into the field or pretend to be picking cotton, and to use a script, thinking massa. We're not playing those games in 2021 or any other time. And so my letter was not respected, and the letter was then sent to the county manager and all of the county commissioners. We are happy that the county responded swiftly, but we must go further. Here's the key. We understand that our history must be told. Black history has been eradicated and erased throughout the educational system. So we want our story told, but we want our story told through black eyes, through our ancestors' eyes, because our responsibility is to continue to keep all of those things alive, very similar to the Holocaust. Yet seven million Jews killed in Germany, seven million but with hundreds of millions of black people killed, even to the point that we don't know how many. And if you've ever gone to the museum of the Holocaust, you see the shoes of those who were taken into the gas chambers. But guess what? Black people didn't even get that dignity. We don't have any evidence of their lives, the beautiful life that lived on this earth, and how black people build the buildings in this country, blood, sweat, and tears of every building you can think of in this country. And so when I think about the Confederate, I think of hate, I think of hurt, I think of division. When I talk about black elevation, what I talk about is the necessity of this country first publicly apologizing to black people as a whole and then finding ways to elevate our conversation. There's no way people can tell me that it's important for you to tell their story, but not ours. Now, the key thing about this is most Confederate soldiers were forced to be part of that war. It's not as if they said, well, you know, listen, I'm going to fight to be a slave and stay to be a slave. That's not what happened. Let's be honest about what's going on here. We're talking about people who have been enslaved for centuries. And then even after 1865, here we are today still talking about this. Now, the intersection is we're about to celebrate Juneteenth. The emancipation of black people, black enslaved people. But let's remember, Juneteenth came two years after we were actually supposedly emancipated. Right. Because the history is constantly and continuously eradicated and hidden. Even in 2021, you have white senators attempting to remove any evidence of slavery from the textbooks any conversation about black harm. And black people are being hurt every single day. My last comment before others speak is that you have black people, people of color, who I call Negroes, openly call them Negroes, who still think it's okay to support white supremacy. It is not. White supremacy not only hurts black people, but everyone in this country. If we're not walking in the foundation of love, which means embracing and including all people, that is called hate. And there's no people who've been hurt by every group of people except black people. There's not one ethnicity on this, in this country who has not done harm to black people. Not one. Even other people of color. And will not be tolerated now or ever. I give you now my sister, Cass Otley. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Um, 
We're having a protest tomorrow. Initially, it was planned when the event was still being planned, and we're still going forward with this protest um, for several reasons. First of all, there's been no type of apology as if you could apologize for what was done. Also, on top of that, we want to ensure that whatever company, entity that is taking over Ladder Plantation has black people on their board, predominantly black. We want black voices and black people at the table to talk about what happened to our people. We also want to make sure that there's some type of oversight so this does not happen again. Because as my sister Corinne mentioned, back in 2009, we had a school trip that came out to Ladder Plantation where Mr. Campbell, the same gentleman that is the director of this event, who happens to be, as he put it, American and of African descent chose out of a bunch of school children to only pick black children to dress up as slaves and thought it was appropriate for them to, I guess, reenact being fill hands and picking cotton. Back in 2009, letters and phone calls were made. Apparently, that did not work. So here we are in 2021, and we are here to let it know that we will not tolerate, one, our history being rewritten, um, the master and his side of the story being glorified. And as my sister said, if this was a Holocaust museum and anyone tried to glorify the, the, the side of the Nazis, this would swiftly be shut down. So we'll be out at Ladder Plantation tomorrow at 3 o'clock. We'll be out there with all of the people united in truth and ending white supremacy and upholding the truth about what really happened to black and brown people in this country and continue to happen. Thank you. Thank you, Cass. I give you now Lucille Puckett. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is, again, Lucille Puckett, and I'm the second vice of the NAACP, but also a community activist out here, um, just advocating on behalf of all of our African American um, people. This one, when I first heard about it coming from a slave owner's perspective, I just thought, like, really, what in the world is really going on? What is this world really coming to? And to be promoted um, on the county premises. I just want to commend the county commissioners at this time. You know, they said they have the phrase better late than never. Um, like my sister Corinne Mack said, you know, this has been going on for years. But finally, for them to be able to take a stand and say no more. You know, we as black and brown people are tired of, you know, the stories being told, you know, at our cost because, you know, we have to relive those memories, even though I can say that, you know, I wasn't a slave and I wasn't, you know, old enough to know what my ancestors went through. I still walk the walk and live, you know, on those that, that past history you know when i see white people not wanting to be in the same room in the same area and you know deal with us still as african americans you know and then when i still see you know black and brown people being you know murdered you know by you know racist cops and things like that you know that just brings back so many memories so you know i'm just here in support of the naacp and you know my sister Cass over here and all of the African-American people and said, you know, I just um, thank you that the letter presentation is, you know, now, you know, it's closed right now. And just looking forward to seeing what that future holds. Thank you, Lucille. I bring to you now um, one of my sisters, Beverly Coughlin. Thank you, Corinne. Um, I am Dr. Beverly Corpening. I'm a minister and my doctorate is in theology. So the only thing that I want to make sure that people here today is until we change our hearts, right. nothing is going to change That's in right. America. Right. So we have got to begin to look at how we are treating people. And we have to understand African Americans are God's people, just like anybody else. Right. So we got to change our hearts. We got to change our thinking. So I just want to ask everybody to please, whatever your prejudices are, whatever your issues are, Let's come together and talk about them, pray about it. Because my belief, I don't know what yours is, my belief is in God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. So I'm going to do what the Bible leads me to do, and that is to encourage people to love each other. Because I love everybody. I don't care what your color is. We've all got something good to offer. We've all got something great to contribute. So please, let's all come together and love each other. Thank you. Thank you sir. I just want to say I'm also the um, health care chair for the NAACP. Thank you, love. 
So in closing, the Charlotte Mecklenburg NAACP would be happy to sit with the county and Park and Recs to find ways to elevate the story of black people in this country. We wouldn't go beyond 1619. We actually teach it in this branch to young people as young as five years old. It's important that everyone understands that black people have gone through such atrocities and such trauma, and that trauma continues even today. You may not know it, but black people all over this country are walking around with layers of trauma. We put one foot in front of the other and continue to go because we are a resilient people. That doesn't mean that the harm is not there. So I thank you for your time. God bless you. Any questions? Well, first of all, I need to go out to look at the space. But I know that um, there is def definitely a need for um, black incarcerated people who are returning citizens to have a place. And I would love to see that used to elevate those people, the people with the worst um, harms and the greatest barriers. I would love to see something happen there that would benefit those people. I haven't um, yet put everything down in terms of the actual plan, but that's the thing uh, th that I'm thinking about. Because I want you to think about this. Every time a black man or woman is incarcerated, that family, the entire family is incarcerated as well emotionally. And sometimes the entire community is. When you think about poverty in this country, it's black and brown people that you think about, right? And so in my mind, why not utilize this particular land to do something that is really going to affect equity, truly affect equity? Lastly, there is so much happening in Mecklenburg County, and most of it excludes black people. We know almost every one of you have been involved with the uh, tent city and how many people were homeless. There are, there are a wealth of things that we could do with land. There are a wealth of things we can do around education, and I think we need to incorporate those too. But once again, it must come from a black experience and a black perspective. If we're not, it's just simply rooted in white supremacy. Anyone else? It's, a, it's a, an acknowledgement, you know, in, in, in uh, reconciliation. There has to be first acknowledgement of wrongdoing. When a person has the inability to apologize, it means that they're either one, not sorry, or number two, they don't even realize their implicit bias. And implicit bias is not in white, just in white folks. Black people have bias as well. So we're trying to figure out ways to begin to have a conversation with folks in love so that people realize the things that you're doing is more harm than good. You may think it's doing good. But well, I'm here to tell you that you are not doing good. I don't care if you're a historic scholar, goody for you, but clearly you don't know my ancestors' history. I do. And as an almost 64-year-old black woman who's been activism for 46 years, nobody can tell me that it's okay for you to do a, a reenactment of Confederate soldiers. Nobody can tell me that's okay, because it's not. The other thing, you talked about the Whitney Plantation cast, but I want you to go even further than that. Go to the Legacy Museum. Every person needs to go to Mobile, Alabama, to the Legacy Museum. That really goes into the root of enslavement of our people. And I promise you, when you walk on that ground, it is hollow ground. I began to weep right away. I felt the spirits of my ancestors. And it tells the full story, including the Confederate soldiers, but it's telling it in a way that's dignified. It is still coming from the black perspective, the, the enslaved perspective. Because who tells our stories? White supremacists tell their story all the time. 
most news are speaking from white supremacy and don't even realize it. And it's okay. We'll all learn together. But this group and others who couldn't be here today, we're sick and tired of being sick and tired. We truly are. I think that's a good choice, but as I said, there's some levels of things that have to happen. It's not just simply having um, that land being um, offered as a historic place, because it is a historic landmark. It really is. But we need to do some things that, that is going to help educate folks. Look, look you talk, most people in this city right now that I spoke to over the course of the last four months didn't even know about Tulsa, Oklahoma. They didn't even know. That's only one sliver of our history, one. There's so many stories, the lame massacres, there's so many other massacres of black people that people don't even know about. We're here to help. Because when you understand the level of harm done to black people, you know that this act or this, this potential act would have done, I mean, irreparable harm. If we have to just stop, stop and think about who we are harming. We have to stop. That's what love does. Love says something is much bigger than myself. Yes, love. I sent the letter and Mr. Campbell responded and said that I was supposed to be a woman of God, but I was vicious and I was racist. That's what he said to me. I don't know this man from a can of paint. I'm writing, and in the letter I said, I'm willing to sit with you to find out how we use this history to elevate equity. But his first few words already was vicious and to me misogynistic. I don't think he would have spoke to a black man that way, not a real black man, but he better understand something. I wear pants just like any other man wears pants. And trust me when I tell you, I got the backbone of any man that you ever would know. I'm not scared of no cat, monkey, dog, rabbit, or anything else. Don't play with me. This is about black people. 46 years of my life have been given, sacrificed, to make sure that black people are taken care of. Respect me as a black woman, black sir. You don't speak to any woman that way, especially another black person. You do not. So you told me right there who you were, up here, and in here. You told me who you were. This is not about, this, listen, you got a 501c3 to do this work. So you're getting money to do this work. God bless you. But what you're not going to do is utilize whatever you're doing to continue to harm black people. You're not gonna do that. You can come here, even coming here in your Confederate uniform is disrespectful. I feel disrespected, okay? Because what you're telling me, in the country where you had a war and you lost the war, it's okay to still wear that foolish uniform. You lost, and quite frankly, it's considered treason in my mind. You lost the war. There shouldn't be any Confederate flags flying, and you surely shouldn't be wearing no uniform around here. Get your mind right, or I'll help you get it right. I'm sick of this. Stop hurting black people. That's it. Stop hurting black people. It's that simple. Listen. It tells you where they're coming from. It's rooted in white supremacy. That's what it's rooted in. And I'm angry. As, J as James Baldwin said, to be relatively conscious in this country is to be angry daily. The difference is I'm angry and, and not sinning. I'm not cussing folk out. But in my mind, the little, the little one, the bad angel saying, cuss them, tell them off. I'm not, because I have been saved too long to go to hell now but I am sick and tired of black people being harmed in this city. Right. This is a city we all live in. We all pay taxes here. Right. Our responsibility is to elevate one another and to love one another and to edify one another. And the way you do that is having positive communication. The disrespect, we're not tolerating it from anybody. I mean, I think you're simplifying it, but the fact is, the history has to be told. It's a small part of the history. Let black people tell the history. Thank you. Let black people tell the history. And again, for a white man to come here in a little uniform, a little Confederate uniform, tell me where your head is at. You have no respect for black people whatsoever. You and your Negroes and whoever else you're working with. You have no respect. Uh, 
there's there's a, a, a hesitancy to follow through. So we're coming out to protest in numbers to let them know that not only are we still upset about the situation, we're going to make sure that there's a follow through because we're not letting this go. That's why. I have to apologize. He said it's a union. I don't know if it's a union or whatever, but you're still coming in this little get up. You're still coming in your little get up, okay? One coming looking like he's a slave and the other coming in a union. I don't care what it is. It's disrespectful.